All right, guys, uh, this video is breaking down how to do the work. Um, a simple four to five step simple framework on how to do the work. And I'm going to share a real live story with you along with this diagram here. So it's easier for you to visualize as you're doing this exercise with yourself. Um, so we all know that you know, we, we, we hear this terminology being thrown around a lot. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. But nobody really knows. Nobody really can break down to you in a practical term on how to do the work. And that's what I'm here to do in this video here. OK, um, so let's talk briefly um, uh, about this. This is the, the human mind here. If we all don't know this yet, it's about the human mind and how do we go to go into our minds and and figure out how to override the bad emotions the bad memory and why why do i start with memory right now um memory is what causes our reaction okay so the memory causes our reaction and then the reaction causes our um sorry the memory what causes our emotions our emotions what creates uh, and, and creates our reaction, okay? So understanding that simple, those three pillars right now will allow you to understand how to, the very last part, override, okay? So I'm going to write that in there right now, override. And what does that mean? Override means to get rid of the bad memories and bring in new memories so you get a new reaction, okay? A new um, memory, okay? So right here, right now, um, we're starting at memory, okay? Uh, so let's, I'm gonna use my real life example here. Um, and I'm gonna try to uh, tell, uh, point out some obvious things. Um, so a memory could be, you know, what some people call a limiting belief. Um, limiting belief meaning your parents you grew up with, or your friends you grew up with, or your uncles and aunts. Somewhere in your community of people that you grew up with has said these things over and over and over and over where it became your culture where now you believe that money is really terrible and um, or you saw your parents lose a lot of their money so uh, the brain subconsciously stores that memory which now becomes uh, a fear in you as you as you grow older as you start to um, get into your job life um, as you enter adulthood um, you or you start your new business or you get a new career, you do have some limiting beliefs, right? So that's, that could be the possible limiting belief. So that's the memory that we're talking about right now, pretend, okay? Um, and then every time you're about to hit some growth in life, okay, um, your brain has this set of memories, so they send an emotion. These motions, emotions are now... Uh, going to create some emotions all right it could be fear it could be happiness it could be excitement it could be nervousness right these are all emotions okay but notice on the far right here i wrote down signal okay the reason why that's important is because i don't like uh to call them emotions um because I think it's a, people have a negative connotation towards emotion. So I call them signals because it really is just a signal, okay? And why is it a signal? Because it's, it's very simple. We have the brain, we have the nervous system, which is your spinal cord, right? And it's got nerves all around it. And then you got your organs hooked up to all the nerves, obviously, right? So the, the signal from the brain has a framework, which is the memory, which sends the signal to the body to feel an emotion, right? Simple as that. It sends to the, to the body, uh, the emotion. So let me just draw it just slightly bigger so it's easier for you to see here. Okay, so let's pretend this is the brain and then that's your spinal cord here. Okay, those are your vertebrae and all and spines and all that. And then your nervous system, your, the nerves come down to your body. Okay, oh, thousands of them. But the, and your organs are all hooked up here, right? You got your heart, you got your liver over here, uh, you got your stomach over here. Anyways, my point is the brain has the memory. Okay, we know that. The emotions are uh, a signal sent from the brain to the body and your organs actually create those chemicals, okay? 
Uh, it the brain tells the body how to create those chemicals so you feel that emotion, okay? Emotions are combinations of chemicals that are, are made up uh, from some sort of part of your organ, okay? And when that happens, now you feel something. And um, let's just pretend now you are, you know, you go through your, your, your grades, you, you go through school, all right? And people are always, um, the society is always telling you, hey, um, when, you, um, when you feel discomfort or when you feel negative emotions, uh, they're negative, they're bad. Get away from those things, run from those things. Um, you don't want bad emotions, you just want to be happy, strive for happiness, right? So what happens now is that's actually the wrong instruction manual for the brain. Okay, why? I'm going to break it down right now. The brain uh, is sending an emotion now. Let's pretend you go through an event in, in your work life or your love life or your family life or your friendship life. Um, any, any sort of uh, event in life. You now have this, you now feel the emotions of fear here. Okay. Um, and we want to run from it. Right, we feel scared, jealous, fear, any sort of unpleasant emotions. We're now going to run from the fear, all right. But in actuality, we're not supposed to run from the fear, we're not even supposed to run from happiness, right? The thing is, we're taught to run towards happiness and run away from fear and 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 um, all the unpleasant emotions. And that's why we never get to do the work. That's why we always continue to run. So what does doing the work mean, right? We're, we're going to get down to it. So um, we, we run from fear now, okay? So let's just say we don't run from fear. What are you supposed to do? You go, Derek, okay, you're not supposed to run from fear. What are you supposed to do? Beautiful, all right? You're supposed to spend time with that emotion, okay? Fear right now. Um, I know it sounds like an oxymoron because we've been taught to run from it now there's this weird guy, Asian guy, telling you don't run from it, right? You're like, what do you mean? What am I supposed to do? Stay, live in fear? No, it's not living in fear. It's learning to communicate with your body, learning to communicate with what your brain is trying to tell you, okay? And what does those emotions mean, okay? Um, so the moment you feel fear, how we actually do the work is what I always tell my friends and uh, some of the mentees that I, I coach uh, and people around me that, you know, are curious about what I do, I tell them, you run towards the fear. You want to, what I say, dance with it, right? You want to poke at it, smell it, taste it, feel it, ask it questions, communicate with it, talk to it, okay? All right? What does that look like? It could, it could look like, um, it could look like, Sitting with a question, it could, it could be, if, let's just say um, you're, you're afraid of, um, let's just say you're afraid of money, okay? Uh, I think we, we, we all could easily say we're not, but I think if we're not excelling to uh, find more financial success or find more self-happiness, uh, uh, self-happiness, um, there's fears in both parts, right? I'm not saying money is the end-all, be-all. Uh, I'm not saying money is, um, you know, uh, success or anything. Uh, it could be anything. It could be any type of success. Self, self-success, um, deeper awareness, th that type of self-success. It could be financial success. It could be love success. It could be, uh, you know, f uh, relationship with your, your employees, your teammates, your em par business partners, your parents. You know, I'm sure some of you guys may not get along with your parents, you know. So let's get down to this. If, I remember when I when I um, had a fear of success in in finances. Okay, um, I I remember I had to um, figure out. Hey, you know why isn't my business growing? Yeah, why wasn't it growing? I I couldn't break my own glass ceiling, and I had to do the work. I had to go deep. So I had to figure out how come my emotions aren't getting me to react the way I want it to. How come I'm not taking action on those things I tell myself that I have to do every morning, work out, get up early, eat a good breakfast, come to work on time, um, you know, take care, finish the to-do list before I leave the job. How come I wasn't finishing my to-do list? How come I was feeling so much 
um, what you what you say um, um, uh, procrastination when the to do list is in front of me, right? Many times we feel that. So when we get that reaction, we know that there's an emotion holding us from that action reaction. Like, well, I don't feel like doing it, right? I don't feel like reading that book. Um, so it comes from an emotion, but the emotions are stemmed from a memory. So understanding that that is happening in that very moment, that's actually um, the reason why we are the way we are today, where we're at in life. You know, if you're unhappy right now, if you're unhappy, you know, in your marriage, in your girlfriend uh, or boyfriend relationship, in your family relationship, in your friend relationship, maybe you don't have friends, right? Um, um, or at least, you know, good friends, true friends, you know, quality friends. Um, it's, it's because of this simple pillar right now, okay? Everything that's ever holding you back comes from this three simple pillar here, okay? So, um, you know, we understand now that the reason why we procrastinate, right? We procrastinate. T-I-N-A-T-E, okay? Or we, um, yeah, we procrastinate. It's because it comes from an emotion. You feel an emotion for you to react this way. We, we know that. It's automated, right? Um, so how do we go back to here and we do an override, okay? So this is now really doing the work here, okay? Um, it's simple. It's, you, 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 gotta, you, 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 you gotta run towards your fear first, okay? Run towards the fear first, okay? Let's just use that for example. And you wanna ask questions, Okay, um, and what what I call Q and A questions and answer. Okay, and you gotta you gotta be really realistic here at this point because if you're not realistic here, if you're trying to lie to yourself, this is not really gonna work. Okay, and that's another subject. Um, so it's asking questions like you know, how come my business isn't uh, excelling? How come I'm not getting the the results I want? You know, every quarter, every month, every year, right? How come my income tax isn't growing. How come I'm not paying more taxes, right? I want to pay more taxes because that means I'm making more money. We know that, okay? Uh, be careful the friends that tell you and the family that tells you don't make more money because you got to pay more taxes. That's a very untrue thing, okay? Because if you, you make more money, you, make, you pay more taxes, but it's okay. You're making more money, right? You have to pay taxes either way, so just pay the taxes, okay? Um, so, it's asking yourself a set of questions like, why isn't it growing? Okay, it's not growing because you know what? Every day I come to work, I'm not really doing the things I really need to do to grow and push my business. Or, or is the work I'm doing really pushing my business? Okay, well, I realize I'm doing the work that really just is maintaining the business. It's not really growing my business. It's just day-to-day -day stuff. Like, you know, maybe you're just, you know, doing the same sales over and over and over. Um, you can do sales, but if you're not hiring people to do sales for you and you're not... Um, finding a way to grow your business or drive more traffic or drive more leads or uh, if you're in a consulting business, you're not finding more clients. If you're in um, uh, the, the, the retail business, you're not finding more products or expansion of products or uh, um, R&D and, and figure out new products you can create. You know, So we, we, it's hard to grow, right? Because there's a limiting belief that we can't do it. I can't create my own product. No one's gonna, I don't believe in my own product. I don't believe in myself. That's why would someone believe in my product? Very true, right? Okay, I don't, no one's gonna believe in my brand. I don't believe in my brand. I don't believe in the name that I even made up in my head. I don't even believe in the logo I created, right? So those are all limiting beliefs, okay? So um, asking those questions, asking those questions sometimes, honestly, one month at a time or two months at a time and asking the same question over and over and over and really just trying to be mindful in that moment and, and feel where the fear is coming from right now. Okay, this is, I know it's kind of a long talk, it's been a 14 minute video on just the fear and the, the, kind of the second pillar here, um, but I'm going to promise you it's going to work at the end of this override here, okay? So, you, 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 you're going to sit with those questions there, all right? You're going to ask a series of questions and rationalize it down or, um, or what, they, what they call in physics, uh, first principles reasoning, which is a physics way of thinking. It's called boiling it down to the fundamental truth, okay? Or first principles reasoning. Those are different terminologies for uh, physics way of thinking. It's boiling it down to the fundamental truth, okay? I'm just going to write it down so you can um, look it up yourself. Um, 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 first principle reasoning. First principles... Uh, First principle of reasoning, yeah, R E A S O N I N G. Okay, first principle of reasoning. Um, 
um, which is boiling it down to the fundamental truth. Boil down to fundamental truth. All right, and what does that mean? That's another subject, but I'll get into that later. Boiling things down to the fundamental truth, which is also uh, which is the same as first principle reasoning. So when you when you can get down to the bare bone of your fear, your happiness, even your happiness, okay? We don't even run from your happiness. Uh, many people don't really know what to do with their happiness. They, they feel happy, they feel great, great, and then they try to do it again and do rinse and repeat to feel the same happiness, which is not really the right thing to do. You're just supposed to figure out, why did it make me happy, right? Wow, it made me happy. That's interesting. Why did I feel happy? Oh, wow, I feel depressed. Why did I feel depressed? Oh, wow, I feel sad. Why do I feel sad? You know, why? Wow, I feel excited. Why do I feel excited? Go deeper. Sit with those for months at a time. And this is how we get to know ourselves, you know? All right. So once we do that here, let's just say you figured out, okay, you know, I do have a set of uh, fear of success or I do have limiting beliefs in um, marriage. Maybe sometimes we don't want to get married because we, f- we truly feel like, um, why are we going to get married? My parents went through divorce, right? So it, it really works in every facet of life because it's really the framework of this brain communicating with the body here, okay? So let's just say we figure out, okay, I use fair success because I, I use that. that was, I had an epiphany several years ago with that and it really resonated with me. So, you know, I have fear of success, let's just say, all right, uh, of success. Yeah, I'm going to write it short here. S-U-C-C-E-S-S. Screw it. I'll just spell it out, Okay. And I sat with that literally for two months, okay? I sat with that for two months, okay? Um, ten minutes a day, ten minutes in the morning, ten minutes uh, or while I'm driving home at night before I go to bed, I would think, why do I feel fear of success? Why isn't my business growing? You know, Don't beat yourself up in this process. Really be real with yourself, but don't beat yourself up. Don't, don't start being negative on yourself like, oh, I'm a worthless piece of shit and I'm a... You know, I'm an idiot. My dad was right. My mom was right. You know, my uncle was right. No, don't beat yourself up. Just analyze at this point. Just study yourself. Just know, hey, I want to just collect a bullet point of why I am this way. Okay, so that's that's what you want to do. So I realized a lot of my fear of success, right, Q&A, I started getting these answers. I started sending my dad. Okay, all right, my family, my uncles and aunts, aunts grandparents, things of that nature, you know. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, but I realized 80% of my fear of success came from my dad. And why? Um, I can tell you a set of events, you know. He started multiple businesses and he's failed. My family also started businesses and they made a lot of money, but they never really kept it and never really did anything with it and never invested it. So they, didn't, they weren't really good financially with it, right? They didn't know how to keep the money. They didn't know how to grow the money. They didn't know how to make the money, but they didn't know how to grow the money. They didn't know how to keep it going, okay? So that's another a fear of success that I started to feel. Um, plus, lack of knowledge too, right? Lack, lack of knowledge as well too. It's the wrong framework, okay? Um, you know, uh, growing up, uh, seeing my... Family fight over money, right? Not, well, not really fight over money, but, you know, they, they, there, was, there was some, you know, this feud over money and things of that nature. So now the, I have these set of memories which creates those set of emotions which create my reaction, right? Does it make sense so far? Okay. So if you don't have any questions, just, you know, leave your questions down below. I'll reply back over there. Um, so right now, I, I, it took me two months to get to this memory part. I was digging into my memory. I wrote everything down over two months, every little memory I could remember about money talks in the family, money talk subjects in the family from my aunt, uncles, dad, grandparents, everybody around me, you know. Um, And I kind of realized, wow, most of the emotion, most of the fear I feel was coming from my dad. And I go, why? Because my dad always said, money doesn't grow on a tree, save all your money. During Christmas and his birthday, when I bought him gifts, he always made me go and return it because he didn't want those gifts. And he's like, that's a waste of money. Hold your money. Save your money. Right? But he never taught me what to do with the money. They just said, save your money. And we know that if you save money, money depreciates in, in our bank accounts, in our mattress, in our, in our piggy banks. Right? So there was, no, nothing to do, there was no end goal again. Right? There was a disconnect in saving money. Because saving money, you got to take the money and make money for yourself. Use the money to make money. 
right? So there wasn't that practice there. So it was, what was the point of making money and saving money, right? It, it, there was no uh, uh, reward at that point, you know? So well, the moment I realized this, two months later, about my father, about the family, and all the memories I had that would create those emotions, which creates the reaction, right? Procrastination and all this stuff. I was like, why am I going to do it, right? Don't waste time, don't waste money. I started to realize I need to override that. How do we override it? Well, it's very simple. But first of all, you have to identify everything. All right? Must identify. Okay? Once you identify everything, once you identify, okay, you know what? I realize I have a problem. I realize where the problem is. Okay? Then I started buying books. I went on a, maybe like a six-month binge on, on this subject here. Okay? Money here. Books. Okay? Audio books. Okay, uh, interviews on YouTube, all right, YouTube, um, yeah, those set of things, I started pounding my head with those things, okay, this finance, everything related to finance, understanding finance more, Google everything, YouTube everything, do the work by searching for things that you want, desperately want, in your brain that you don't have. Because you don't understand these set of, you don't understand the game, you don't understand the set of rules, you don't understand the set of principles, the causes and conditions of money, how to look at money, how do I look at money. Everybody looks at money a little bit differently, right? So when I took this six month, I remember, and I'm still doing it, I mean, I still do it subconsciously probably because it's such an ingrained thing in me. I started to say, you know what? My dad wasn't financially successful, right? Q&A, right? We're doing a Q&A work with our memory. My dad wasn't successful. Why am I listening to my dad? Why am I allowing my dad's voice and his judgment on me buying my new car and buying my, uh, getting my new apartment? Um, I remember he told me, he's like, son, I don't know why you bought that car. It was such an expensive car. Like, I, don't, I don't understand why you did it, okay? It's such a waste of money, right? And I'll go, Thank God I came across this realization before he told me that. Because after he told me, I'm just like, I told him, I'm like, Dad, you can't be giving me financial advice. You're not financially successful. Not that I don't love you. Not that I'm trying to talk down on you. But you're not financially successful. Now, if, you, if I want to learn how to drive a truck, which is what she does, I will definitely come to you because you're great at that. You're good at that. Okay? So... Always qualify the advice you're getting from people, right? So do the work by doing that as well too. Figuring out, you know what? My parents aren't supposed to give me advice in school or life because my mom's a stay-at-home mom and she doesn't really make money and dad is a nine-to-five worker and I'm trying to be a photographer and a consultant in a photography so I can't take advice from either of them, right? I'm trying to be an artist and none of them are artists so I can't take advice from either of them, right? Uh, I'm not telling you to, you know, uh, disrespect them. I'm just saying, understand, be careful with what information you let into your brain real estate, okay? So, once I started going on a binge, I started to consciously, uh, what I call, um, brainwash myself with these information. Literally, what does brainwashing mean? I listened to certain books 14 times. I listened to a certain interviews and things that really I found like resonated with me. I listened to those interviews and audiobooks 20 times to a month straight sometimes every day driving home to work and back from work and in the shower and you know things like that in the, in the kitchen when you're cooking whatever you know literally religiously pound those information in your brain and when you have when you can get into your subconsciousness when you get into your new memory also what we call programming or paradigm once you get it in there, your job is to get it in here. And how? By listening to it at least 14 times minimum. And once it's in here, it's going to automatically create a new emotion and automatically you're going to get a new reaction. And I, could, I can testify for that because there's times now that I can't wait to jump out of bed to get my to-do list done because I see farther. My vision, my perspective is wider, you know, um, so I hope this video here, this chart, this diagram here, this framework here helps you understand ourselves, the, 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 you know, how the brain works, okay? How the brain communicates with our physical body while we feel emotions that way, all right? Um, I'm going to leave it here for now. I hope that 
you know, these, these four steps here helps you to start um, trying this framework with, and, and you know, I, I, I suggest that you take one thing only for the next several months. Don't focus on anything else because a lot of times we over uh, try to, we over try to do everything and then we don't succeed. And then now, now we feel like it doesn't work, right? So be best thing is just say, you know what? I just want this one big thing to be solved in my life. And that's why doing the work never ends because if you have six months to four months to a year to do work, how much work can you really do, right? How much trauma do you really have? How much baggage do you really have? How much bad programming or paradigm do you really have? So doing the work is a, is a continuous life self uh, lesson and, and it's, it gets more and more exciting, more and more self-liberating. And it's, one of, it's an emotion that I always say to people that I just can't share with you. It's an emotion that you, you, you know, most likely you can't share with people, you know, because many people don't do the work, right? Um, so I'm going to leave this up to you guys. I'm going to leave it here at this point. You guys have any questions, leave in the comment below. I'm going to get back to you guys there. But I wanted to uh, shine this program, this application into your brain so that your, your brain is now a, a, a more advanced brain, okay? Because our brain is the best technology in this world where nothing can ever duplicate this and nothing can process like this brain here. So if we learn how to rewire it, we will, we will, we will achieve anything we can almost ever thought we could, you know, uh, ever achieve. Okay, guys, I love you guys. Stay safe. Have a great night. Bye.